Hey, how's it going, everyone? I figured I'd put together a little video of the things that I learned working on the Pug Forest Challenge. Now, this was a challenge that was put on by iDesign and Windbrush, and both are great channels. I use Cinema 4D, so uh, they have great tips and tricks on how to use Cinema 4D. And both actually use Unreal Engine a lot, just like me. So I figured this is a great opportunity for me to use both Cinema 4D and Unreal Engine to make a cool render and actually tell you the story of how I did it, as well as some tips and tricks on things that I learned, because I learned some stuff about volumetric lights, let me tell you. Uh, well, yeah, let's take a look at the project. So as part of the challenge, you have to download this template that actually has a baked camera animation and this pug here. You can see, let me actually uh, zoom into it. And uh, so basically those are the two kind of biggest elements of the scene that need to be kept is the pug and the camera move. So when I was looking at this, I was just thinking, how can I incorporate the pug into some kind of story? And I love horror, particularly colorful horror. So let me show you the scene that I came up with. What if this guy was hunting this demon through this weird cemetery place and the demon hides behind the statue at just the right moment so the guy misses him? I figured that'd be a great way to incorporate the statue into the storytelling of the piece. So to make the environment, I uh, actually really heavily leaned on this Eastern European slums kit, which is fantastic. It's like a really moody, cool kit. Let me just look at some of these screenshots. Like you can see there's the building there. Um, of course, I completely tore out the lighting and made my own very colorful kind of moonlit, uh, Hollywood backlit moonlit kind of set. Let's actually take a look around and see what, what it is. Put in these gates that actually aren't even attached to anything. <laughs> um, but you'll notice that I needed to put the pug onto a stand. So let me show you how I created the stand. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D and uh, this is uh, the Gus statue here, just kind of for size reference. Um, and normally I, I label all my meshes, uh, don't at me, uh, but uh, this is the low poly mesh. This is the one that I do all my kind of UV layouts on. So you can see uh, this is kind of like the UV layout here. Um, let me just go back to standard, just get a bigger view. Um, and so this is the interesting part though. This is the high poly. Um, so let me just kind of hide the, uh, the low poly. So what I'm using is this displacer that's basically just using this noise shader, like just a built-in Cinema 4D noise shader. I'm using box fields, so you can see all these like little boxes, to kind of control where that noise is being applied onto the model. So kind of an interesting technique for creating your high poly. And you can see it, it's very high poly. Um, but uh, that's essentially what I did to get the kind of high low. Um, and then I took that into Substance. So here's that model in Substance Painter. And it was pretty easy to recreate the material. Um, let me just actually kind of go through our different layers and see what we have going on. I forgot how I did this, <laughs> but I know that I baked the low and high poly in here. I love using this program to bake. So if you want to do that, you just go bake mesh maps and um, you just choose your high poly and low poly and all that stuff, um, which is great because it gives you all the channels that you need to kind of work in this program. So it looks like I'm just using like a concrete and then I'm kind of like filling in the dark areas using an ambient occlusion. And I'm just using grass and like, there's a lot of different layers. Like, I guess the light is like, it's kind of um, appearing from the top most of the time. I'm blurring that. Um, yeah, again, like here, mostly like a gradient from the top to bottom, I'm painting in extra areas where I want like a little bit more of that detail. And that's it. That's that's kind of all the texture layers that, um, or material layers that go into creating this. It's not like a great, uh, but you know, it kind of matches the original model. So it worked for this project. So here you can see the asset in Unreal Engine and it kind of matches the colors and mood of the uh, pug statue here. Uh, but you can also see, hey, we've got animated characters in this. Uh, so this is from Studio New Punch. They've got a skeleton zombies collection. Look at these gooey boys. Um, I love monsters and anything and anything I could put a monster in, I, I will. So, um, but you'll notice that this is actually moving. Like, how did I do this? Well, if you're unfamiliar, I've actually spent the last year making a motion capture system that uses Steam VR hardware. So like this is a Tundra tracker. You can use a VR setup to actually do motion capture. So this is Mega MoCap VR and you can see I'm wearing all those Tundra trackers. I think I have five on my body right now. And I just line myself up with the skeleton model and then, hey, I'm the character and hilarity ensues. So this, you can use take recorder or whatever and create all sorts of fun animations as you can see, amazing for creating dancing skeletons. So there you go. If your project has dancing skeletons, get my plugin. 
Okay, so this is looking really cool, right? We've got uh, two characters animating. There's a pug on a stand. The environment's looking pretty cool. You can see like the flashlight just lit up this fog element. So I, let me actually show you what that fog is because this is my favorite thing and I use it in every project. So I basically authored this material here. Um, you actually find the parent. So um, that was an instance of it. So this is actually the master material for that fog. Pretty complicated, it's, but um, I can go through in essence what it's doing. So it's using this kind of primarily this layer, which is actually a 3D sculpt that I did that's looping because um, I wanted to basically make sure that like when I did some kind of curve adjustments, things didn't just fall off randomly. So you got this wispy smoke layer here, you got a more bubbly smoke layer, and then kind of like a fine gritty. This one I think was created in After Effects, just like a fractal noise kind of thing. Um, so that's going through a ton of different kind of warps and all this kind of UV nonsense. It's kind of like panning it and making it move around. Um, but the most interesting thing is the depth fade node here. So let me show you what that does. So if I raise this up, you can see there's a lot more opacity where the scene is distant. But when I'm starting to bring it down, because like the ground plane is kind of closer to us than the sky was, it starts to fade out the opacity. So this is kind of like a nice way to kind of make sure that there's no hard clipping when you like get close to your environment. Like if it didn't have that, you would actually see the line where it intersects with the geometry, uh, where this plane intersects with the geometry. So yeah, really useful and kind of creates like this more uh, fine kind of volumetric look, even though it's not volumetric. And you can see it doesn't actually have proper parallax, but in the shot, um, it looks really, really great. You can see just kind of adds like that kind of cool, wispy smoke look. So things were looking really good. Uh, I was very happy with everything. Then there's this weird nagging thought I had. So what if the scene took place during a rainy night? And that changed everything, except for most of it, but everything. <laughs> so I duplicated the set and made a rain version. So you can see there's quite a lot of changes. We've got a volumetric light on the flashlight. The flashlight's illuminating. Um, the walls, there's actually like these cool rain particles and the rain particles are coming from ultra dynamic sky. There's an incredible weather simulation uh, in this uh, a plugin. I'd recommend this wholeheartedly. This has uh, really saved my bacon. So this is the really cool particle simulation from ultra dynamic sky that's creating rain droplets and splashes whenever it collides with something, even when it collides with my VTuber here, Lars. So if you want your characters to kind of collide with particles and just physics objects in general, you want to go and under um, collision presets, choose physics actor uh, on your static or sorry, skeletal mesh. And so that'll make sure that it's using your physics asset to actually create some cool collisions and really interact with your environment. The rain kind of became an issue to actually make it um, apparent. I had to like tweak the shader a little bit to give it a little bit more opacity. Also motion blur was really blurring out the raindrops. So you'll notice when I switch between the in-camera view and the not in-camera view, I have to keep changing over um, my kind of lighting settings. It's because I had to really change the shutter speed of the camera to make it like really fast to capture some of those raindrops. But um, another thing that was really fortunate when like I was converting the scene to rain, um, we got like a cool puddle texture as well here, which has like kind of ripples. Uh, so I added those, but the actual base, um, uh, European slums uh, actually came with, look at the shader, a wetness slider. So you can actually like change how much uh, sheen is on this um, surface. So I, I darkened the material and then I added um, some sheen. And yeah, again, like puddles everywhere. Change this light to be a lot more orange because I wanted to really direct your eye to kind of like this warm area in the frame. Um, this whole piece, I'm kind of like making your eye go left and then you see something over here and then like the lighting flash is like, oh yeah, it's like something's happening over on the right side. And then I'm like uh, trying to like get your attention again with like the light swiping here, like, oh, something's happening with this character. And then again, the lightning flash really highlighting the silhouette of this character. So I'm constantly trying to make the you look back and forth to catch the important bits of information at any given time. Uh, hopefully I was success successful with that. I don't know if I really was because it's, it's a quite a busy scene. Um, but uh, let me actually go over some of the other uh, cool things in this uh, environment right now. So you'll notice that there's a bunch of floating black objects here, and these are actually gobos that I created. And you're not seeing the effect of them uh, in editor. It, it will appear during render. Oops, I actually grabbed the gobo here. So here I've made a new scene just to show you what the gobo object does. So if I press play, 
you can see that the object that's sh uh, casting the shadow doesn't appear in the game mode. And the way you do that is, uh, let me just open up the blueprint. In your static mesh, let's find the rendering, you want to be visible, but also hidden in game. But then you also need hidden shadow on. And maybe this one on, I don't know. But, uh, oh, this one's good too. Cast some Mac shadow, we'll make sure that the uh, shadow looks really good. Um, but here we have uh, my Gobo object where you can actually combine different RGB channels. Um, you can invert it so that um, basically white is transparent versus um, opaque. Uh, then there's also like rotation options. So you can like rotate the two um, different channels separately of each other. So let's actually do that. Interesting stuff you can do. Um, you can change the blending mode. There's a lot of stuff that I might put this functionality inside of the Mega MoCap VR um, pretty soon. I'm still having to do some tests with it, but uh, it's, uh, overall, I'm, I'm really happy using this versus light functions because with a light function, as cool as they are, it feels like it takes place over the whole light. So like, this is much easier to place like a flag where you just want like a specific dark area. You just like plop that down. And then you have like, just like a, a more interesting shadow wherever you want it. Um, because yeah, again, sometimes you don't want it to be taking place over the whole light. So after lots and lots of iterating and just trying to figure out the best settings for everything, I'm finally able to render the scene out. And so you want to open up the movie render queue. And I've got a preset that I've made for this one here, Rain Render 3. So let's take a look at some of the settings that I found were the best. So EXR gives you the most latitude. I'd recommend uh, rendering to an uh, EXR. The wave, probably not that important. Uh, under the different kind of passes, I chose to do a depth pass, um, motion vector is not as important to me, but uh, I want base color metallic. Uh, you can basically find other ones. If you go to, uh, let's see, if you click on this little folder, you can actually see all the different options you get in the buffer visualizations here. So uh, anyways, under anti-aliasing, I actually went kind of lighter on the temporal sampling count than I normally used to. Uh, one of the big problems I had in the scene was making sure that the rain didn't blur out um, because it was moving very fast. I'm doing some things with like the shutter. I think the shutter on the camera was like 720. Just wanted to make sure that, oh, and also like limiting the blur amount. So like it can only be like 1% instead of the, the typical 5% uh, that it is. But anyways, I get, here's, there's uh, my temporal and spatial uh, sample counts. And I've got to render warm up time so that the particle simulation can get going. This is probably the most uh, important kind of field. These are the uh, console commands. And I think the most important one for me, because I had this flashlight, so you can see I actually have a volumetric light source on my character, on the flashlight, and he's moving it around really fast because he's searching for this demon, right? Um, you'll notice that there's actually even a, a trail effect. I kind of scrub through here. The volumetric light is kind of has like, a, it's lagging behind essentially the, the source. Uh, just kind of like to make the rendering a little bit uh, lighter weight on the system. Um, but there's a way you can actually avoid that. So let's open up our movie render queue again. You want to have this volumetric fog temporal reprojection to zero. And then to make up for some of the artifacting that that causes, I have this history miss super sample account. So this is like looking at either side, I think by 12 frames of the current frame. And that's going to kind of blend those two together just to like kind of smooth over any kind of artifacting that could happen. And there's a volumetric fog jitter. I just put that in there just in case. Um, and they seem to work out pretty well. But uh, these are kind of like the settings I use for typically all the projects. That the field quality, motion blur separable is an important one, um, et cetera. I'll put all of these into the description. So this is our raw render and things are looking really good. So I didn't have to do anything, but I did because I'm a compositor. So uh, let's actually take a look at what I'm doing here. Um, Let's start. So yeah, I've got like kind of the base. Um, I'm blurring the light because I've found that like, this is a little bit too sharp still. Um, I don't know what this layer is. I don't know what this layer is. Looks like I'm just like adding stuff. Curves, um, kind of in increasing the intensity of the rain using that kind of luminescence. I'm blurring uh, the, fu the fire a little bit, adding a vignette. Let's see if I think this one's, okay, this one's another curves. Got a lens flare for the light. Um, 
gotta have the, the lens flares. Lens flares on uh, Unreal Engine are pretty good, but I still like the ones that you can add in After Effects. Adding a glow layer, adding a brighten layer, because um, I want to like bring more attention to this area. We've got like a, a LUT that's on there, um, some kind of uh, film grain. Oh, actually, I think I'm applying film grain later on. Um, so let's just actually go to the, there's a water on the lens layer. So um, this, uh, shout out to Andrew Kramer from Video Copilot using his tutorial still to create this kind of uh, rain water look um, for the lens. So I'm, I'm basically adding that just to the edges. So it makes the image just feel more wet and just like the lens is this damp. Uh, Cause I really wanted to create that kind of saturated uh, wet feeling. Um, then we got another curves, of course, curves upon curves, and a, a grain and a sharpen. And then we end up with like a final image that looks like this. So, yeah, so many steps. Oh my God, and then there's sound design. So I did all my sound design in Premiere because I'm a basic bitch. And <laughs> no, Premiere is, uh, is, is great. The thing that I love about Premiere that not a lot of people know about is um, this audio track mixer. So you can actually set up like different reverbs for different tracks, you can have sub mixes, you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. Um, but anyways, um, I didn't do anything fancy for this. I just basically added some kind of gravel uh, for when he's walking, some kind of splooshy noises when this guy's walking. Um, we've got a cool music track. Uh, I've got three layers of rain, two layers of uh, kind of fire. I think I did like a edit to get rid of like a really loud pop that was kind of taking me out. We've got lightning and thunder. Um, but yeah, uh, just as, essentially anything that could make noise in the sound, I tried to cover, including the cloth noise when he kind of like tries to warm up. And um, yeah, that's how I put everything together. So here is the final piece. Thanks so much for joining me on this special look at the things I had to either make or learn for the Forest Pug Challenge. And thanks again to iDesign and Windbrush for putting on this challenge because I think I learned a lot about Unreal Engine. And if you want to learn a lot about Unreal Engine, they're doing a ton of stuff on their channel, so check them out. Uh, if you want to learn more about Mega Mocap VR, definitely look at this channel. I've got a ton of videos on that. And yeah, I just really want to, everyone to make stuff in Unreal Engine because it's my favorite program. Uh, not biased, uh, just I like the program a lot. It has really kind of uh, empowered me as a creator. So I just hope that it does the same for other people. Uh, but yeah, everyone, thanks so much for joining me again and take care.